so I, I guess I want to know for you, like your process of of becoming the character Doctor Bendite. Like, what kind of direction had you received, um, and what what did you kind of do to prepare yourself to take on that role? Yeah, so a, cu a couple of different things. It's a great question, Chris. Um, when I first joined the cast. Um, Jeff Johns, the showrunner, creator, had invited me to his office and said, look, how, how can I help? You're stepping into this role here in season two. What, what can I do to get you up to speed? And I said, look, I, I realize I'm in these scripts right here, but I don't know how we got to here. Can you can you help me with the other script? And and so he sort of he he yelled out to his assistant, "Hey, print up all the scripts for Alex." And so I went home with a stack of scripts. And that wow. doesn't always ha that doesn't always happen. Actors sometimes only get the scenes that they're in. They don't even mm -hmm. get the full episode, let alone the entire arc of the character or the season. And so I was really grateful for that. And then also Jeff had me sit, and I've told this story before. Jeff had me sit at his desk, not not on the other side of his desk. Had me sit at his seat behind his desk with his laptop and said, watch this. And he showed me the opening scene to season two, where it's all about my daughter, Rebecca. And oh, wow. it, it hadn't been finished with VFX or sound effects or anything like that. But that first five minutes was enough for me to understand where my character is emotionally. What happens when I join the story? That's all I needed. Um, so in terms of emotionally, that, that helped me. You know, I rely on the script heavily. I rely on everything that's on the page because good writing, that's all you need to do. You just trust the process. But in terms of building the character, you know, I, I realize that Dr. McNider, his primary function is as a doctor, is as a helper, right? The Hippocratic Oath is to do no harm. It's to help. And so where so many characters are, for the JSA and the ISA, they react first with their fists or their weapons or whatever it is. Wildcat, right? He mm -hmm. reacts first. And then he thinks about his actions later. Everything that Dr. McNider or Dr. Midnight does is the other way. It's thinking first, thinking second, thinking third, and then only reacting when necessary. And so everything factors through the Hippocratic Oath. Everything factors into um, how, how measured... Uh, and, and methodical I can be. And so if you notice my pattern of speech, it's a little bit slower than some of the other characters. It's mm -hmm. a little bit more thought out. It's very unlikely to be knee jerk or reactionary, which is why when Eclipso has such an impact on, on this season, it actually forces me into slightly more reactionary or less comfortable positions than I, than, than I otherwise would be. Um, which is why I think the conflict that presents itself in season two is so big because Eclipso knows exactly how to push the buttons for every single character. Then the last thing on top of that is, you know, through through my research and through what I know, even, even though Blue Valley is present day, we know that some of the original members of the JSA really sort of hit, hit the public eye in the 1940s. And so Pat, the pattern of speech was different back then. The cadence of speech, posture was different. We're much more, I mean, look at us. We're all casual and comfy in our chairs right. now. Mm -hmm. But ev everybody, even if you were of meager financial means back then, everybody had their church suit or their, or their work suit. You know, everybody took pride in how they, how they stood. And so from posture to speech to cadence, everything in Charles McNider is, is, comes through that measure.